write them. Perm, are you observer or on no, boards? No, I, I try to. The, the difficulty I have is because I'm FSA authorized, because uh, of my fund management, I have to stay away from boards uh, because I'm just really nervous about being uh, contaminated. Uh, so I'm not saying that I don't have confidence in the companies I invest in, but I'm, I'm just very nervous about that So because that's where most of my income comes from. Um, but the, the two things I have learned about boards is I'm very nervous about investing in um, companies where they are bringing an angel investor along who is effectively putting in a very small amount of money. I had a situation where an investor was putting in 10,000, but it was going to take out something like 25,000 a year as a, as a uh, remuneration for being a you know, one day a month director <laughs> for three years, non-negotiable. And I was amazed at how, how often that comes up. And, and what happens is these people are very good at investing in their own PR. So they convince people that by having, having me on your board, gold dust will, will, will appear. Yeah. So the, 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 the things I've learned is I, I stay away from what I call you know, directors for hire. And I, I always ask if somebody is involved and somebody is one of these grandees, that a lot of people want to have a grandee on their board, how much time is the director really going to put in? I'd rather have four directors working together than having a board of 10 directors who never actually all are in the same room at the same time. So to me, it's, it's, it's very important that it's a focused, meaningful, you know, they share, share common goals. They're all oh, that's, but, that's but just, are ahead. you saying though that in, in your example, if that investor, if that angel had put in a million bucks, would that be okay for uh, them to, to be compensated by the company? Yeah, absolutely, totally, totally. So I it's think not so the compensation. Yeah, it's it's gotta be proportionate. Okay. It's gotta be absolutely proportionate. And it's also gotta be though, even if they are putting in a million dollars, and it's going to be very hard to say no, whether they're being on the board adds value to the direction of the company. Because again, you do get some, you know, the, 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 the battle of the egos, where you do get somebody who writes a cheque for a million and then wants to run the company. What I'm, what I'm investing in is the management team that I've seen, not necessarily the non-exec uh, director. So, of course, if someone writes a million, they can take over the company in that, in that particular instance. But I, I'm just nervous about the whole... Uh, well, uh, here we are. I got to get the hook out. Who would have thought that this panel would have such a strong finish like that? Uh, I'm surprised. <laughs> yeah. I imagine you are too. I've got time for maybe just one question. There's one. Yes, sir. Stand up again, please. Andrew Stewart, Available Energy. Uh, how would you, on the board subject, how would you characterize the advantages of having advisory boards who truly have ability to advise in knowledge-specific areas? Well, they, they, a smaller yeah. board. The advisors are, are great for scientific advice or yes. business connections, that kind of thing, but they're, they're not very good in terms of stewardship because they don't have the, the financial information right. and, and the deep secrets of the company to, to work with. So they're great, you know, they're, they're icing on the cake, but you need to have stewardship. You need to have a good independent board of directors giving guidance uh, to the entrepreneur, really holding the entrepreneur to task and challenging the entrepreneur and making sure he or she performs according to the business plan, providing the support, not questioning every move they make, but really making, giving them the, the guidance and the assistance and the encouragement well, to excel. I agree very much with what you're saying. I'm just wondering if you have that small governance board and then a separate advisory yeah, board absolutely. on knowledge specific yeah. areas. Es especially for very esoteric technologies where where those connections and that knowledge is, is very important. I, I, would, I would, sorry Frank, just to, just to find out, I would only have an advisory board in, in that very specific circumstance where it's a science or a technology. Um, in any other organization, you know, mainstream commercial organization, it's a SOP. You know, you're, you're, either, you're either a director or you're not. Uh, and uh, I would never, never. Well, you but, know. but wait, let's not confuse it with maybe you were thinking mentors, right? Like, because it's good for the entrepreneurs or other people on the yep. team yep. to have mentors, people they can call and say, well, Safe what would you do in this situation, well. right? So they're kind of like advisors, or but, would you put them I know, in a different I, Again, I put category. them in a different thing that okay. you, your coach, I, I would never want to be in a business uh, where my, uh, a director turns up with their coach or their coach is on an advisory oh. board. Because I think mentoring is great, coaching is great, but that is a one-to-one -one thing. Uh, it's very hard to get coaches for companies. And if you have a coach for a company, then they don't need to be on the board, they're acting as a coach. So I think there are, and I have acted as a coach for, com uh, for companies, but I think, again, a coach shouldn't be on a board because then you get a conflict of interest as well. Well, so we've got to wrap yeah. it up, huh? 
I never thought we were going to go this strong, this long. Terrific. <laughs> what a fantastic panel. Will you join me? Here?